Before a patent is granted, an application is filed by the inventor. Typically, the patent office and the inventor have correspondence concerning what type of claim will be issued. The record of that exchange is public after the patent is issued and is referred to as the file history. What the patent office says about the claims, and how the inventor responds, sheds light on what the patent claim covers. Any assertion of the patent will involve a review of the file history by both sides. One thing that attorneys look for in a file history is called file history estoppel. In short, this is when an inventor takes a position that the patent claim covers a narrow invention when getting the patent, and then later claims a broader interpretation when enforcing the patent. For most non-attorneys, it's not critical to be able to spot a file history estoppel issue in any particular file history. However, it is critical to understand what they are. I'm going to use a simple patent to show how the file history estoppel issue arises and how it is later used as a defense in an assertion of the claims of that patent. Let's have a look at the process the inventor went through to get this patent. The file history is available on the USPTO website. Buckle up, they're long documents. This one is 78 pages long. It's not uncommon to find file histories that are hundreds of pages long. The inventor first filed for the patent on February 18, 1999. When a patent is filed, the inventor is required to submit a claim, except for provisional patents, which are a special case. That claim is then examined by the USPTO. The examiner looks for a lot of things, but for our purposes, we will focus on the patentability. Was the applicant the first to invent this idea, and is it non-obvious in light of what was invented before? The examiner does a search of prior patents, publications, all sorts of publicly available materials that are collectively called the cited art or references. These are all the materials that the examiner believes represent what was known prior to the applicant's invention. The examiner then issues the patent office opinion on the applicant's claim in a document called an office action. If the patent office rejects the applicant's claim, the applicant can amend the claim or simply argue that the examiner's opinion is misguided. It is in this response to the Patent Office that the file history estoppel issues get created. Recall the claim that eventually was issued. This is not the claim that was originally filed. Here is the claim that was originally filed. Note for now the word banned in the claim. This will get amended by the applicant later. The handwriting on this is done by the patent examiner and indicates that this claim was rejected or withdrawn. We'll see why in a moment. The examiner did a search for prior art and found a number of references believed to be relevant. The examiner then compared the applicant's claim to that prior art and rejected the claims. The examiner's opinion was that the applicant's original claim was obvious based on two prior patents. Here's where the applicant amended the original claim based on the patent examiner's rejection of the originally filed claim. The applicant's changes to the originally filed claim are underlined and or put in parentheses as required by the Patent Office rules. In this case, the applicant removed the word band and added the underlined words all relating to a narrower type of band, a wristband. The type of wristband is also specified in this amendment. It is a wristband that attaches at opposite ends of the opener. It's not a bracelet type band where the physical opener hangs off the band like a key on a keychain or a pendant. While this seems a straightforward and simple response to the patent examiner, it is where the estoppel is created, as we'll see in a moment. The prior art shows only a band. The need to call it a wristband may have been unnecessary. Saying that the band attached at opposite ends and leaving it at that may have been enough to satisfy the examiner and get the claim issued. Ultimately, file history estoppel is second-guessing, Monday morning quarterbacking. If the applicant's attorney had chosen to take a broader approach, the claim may have been rejected. The important thing is that the public can later rely on what the applicant did. Whether they could have done something else is not important. It's the position that they in fact took that is important, and they are stuck with it and cannot later claim that the patent should cover more. Let's see how this operates by looking at one of the possible infringing devices. Ignoring the file history, the patent owner might assert that this Palm Mountain device infringes, using what is known as the doctrine of equivalence. In this instance, the patent owner might argue that the difference between a wrist-mounted device and a palm-mounted device is so slight that it should be ignored. Without the file history, and only looking at the prior art, the patent owner might argue that the additional element, wristband, was added to avoid a keychain-type band. The patent owner might argue that it would be unfair to narrowly construe it to not include a device worn around the palm. However, the file history tells a different story, and the applicant is stopped from arguing that a palm mountain device would infringe. The applicant chose a narrower claim whether they had to or not. The amendment was made in response to a rejection from the patent office. 
and the patent owners is stopped from taking a different position than they took to get the claim allowed. It's important to understand the concept of file history estoppel, whether you're an accused infringer or seeking to obtain a patent. If you're applying for a patent, one has to really think about the type of devices that you want your claim to cover. If you're an accused infringer, you need to see what elements can be eliminated and still use the invention without infringing a claim. Let me Monday morning quarterback this claim, with apologies to the inventor and their attorney. This is what all attorneys do when they're reviewing patents. I would eliminate all reference to wrist-type bands and rely on the opposite ends amendment that the attorney did make. This way the claim would cover a device that is placed on the wrist, the palm, or the fingers of a hand. I might also make clear that the device does not have to be used when worn on the body when in use. Whether this claim would have been allowable is not known. It was never submitted. It could very well have been rejected. In practice, file history estoppel is nearly always brought up as a defense in an infringement action. This has been a simple illustration of what that type of argument looks like and how it comes about. In practice, this is where an experienced attorney is worth their money. Having read through hundreds if not thousands of file histories, they can spot estoppel issues very effectively. Thanks for watching, and I hope it helps. Mm -hmm.